Now guys, after discussing about the intercostal space, let us go a little bit in more depth. I hope you are actually following my complete concept here, my planning here, how to make this easy. So first we have seen the thoracic wall, anteriorly sternum, vertebrae and the ribs. And then in between the ribs, you will be able to find here the intercostal space. And now we are actually going in more depth. Now we are going to learn inside that intercostal space, we are having intercostal artery and then intercostal vein and then intercostal nerve. So we are now going to learn about all those three of them one by one. So now first of all, let's get started with the intercostal artery here. So let me give you the entire orientation first, entire introduction first, and then we'll draw our diagram. Now this is one of the intercostal space. In that, please concentrate only and only on the arteries right now, sir. Intercostal artery. And look exactly wherever I'm showing you right now. So in this diagram, first of all, dorsal iota here. Posteriorly, dorsally, you have the iota, dorsal iota, the descending one. And that dorsal iota concentrate there, it has given a branch here. Now this artery I'm actually speaking about. And if you just follow that artery, if you just follow that artery, that artery is actually going between the two ribs, between the two ribs there. And definitely the name of that artery has to be intercostal artery. Between any two ribs, it will be intercostal, intercostal artery. If you just follow this intercostal artery, it's moving, it's going there, it's going there, it's going there and all the way till here guys. And that intercostal artery is referred to as the pos posterior intercostal artery. That is posterior intercostal artery. Wow. So therefore, the first point to learn here is that the posterior intercostal artery is a branch of aorta. Then the next one, forget about the aorta right now guys, come ventrally right now. In ventrally, what do you have in the front here? Sternum. And observe just adjacent to the sternum, you'll be able to see here internal thoracic artery. Internal thoracic artery. Just adjacent to the sternum here, there will be internal thoracic artery. And that internal thoracic artery, if you observe like more closely, you'll be able to appreciate that it is giving a branch. And this branch is again going between the two ribs. I'm able to see that branch between the two ribs. And again, it is intercostal artery. What is the name of this intercostal artery here? This one will be the anterior intercostal artery. And we can see both of them are actually going to form the anastomosis. So what is the final conclusion from this diagram on the screen here? Yes, every student knows that there will be intercostal artery. But please update your knowledge from today onwards. There will be like two intercostal arteries. One is the posterior intercostal artery. Another one is the anterior intercostal artery. And out of these two, the posterior intercostal artery is a branch given from aorta. And then the anterior intercostal artery is a branch which is given from internal thoracic artery, guys internal thoracic artery. Perfect. Now keeping all this concept in our mind, let's draw the diagram here guys. Please write on the heading there as intercostal artery. Let's learn in detail about the intercostal artery here. So, now imagine this one here to be your mandibrim sternum. Followed by that you'll be having body of the sternum. And then there will be xiphoid process. And uh, just draw like two or three ribs coming and joining here. We don't need all of them here. Okay. So just imagine like two or three ribs over here. And we know the ribs are joining the sternum with the help of a small piece of cartilage here. That's a costal cartilage. Just a schematic diagram, guys. Don't try to be very, like very specific. Like second rib has to join at the sternal angle. <laughs> we all know that. So just a schematic diagram. Now posteriorly, what do you have here? Dorsally, there will be iota. Imagine this one to be your iota present dorsally. Now that iota will actually give a branch. Then this one here will be the posterior intercostal artery. So posterior intercostal artery is a branch of iota. It is given up from the dorsal iota. Now on the other side, anteriorly, what do you have here? Anteriorly, there will be an internal thoracic artery here. And this internal thoracic artery is passing just adjacent to the sternum here like this. So this one will be the internal thoracic artery. Now this same internal thoracic artery, remember, it is also known as internal mammary artery. Internal mammary artery, guys. 
Why? Because that is the artery which will be giving, in females, it will be giving the branches which will be supplied to the mammary gland or the breast. So, that is why internal thoracic artery it is also known as the internal mammary artery. Now, this internal thoracic artery is the one which will be giving the anterior intercostal artery and that is the one which is actually going to form the anastomosis with the posterior intercostal artery guys. Perfectly done. So, whatever I have explained you in the diagram there, everything has been registered here. Now, one thing I would like you people to recall in your mind now, we do not have to worry about the iota. Iota is actually coming from your heart, ascending iota, arch of iota and descending iota. But where is this internal thoracic artery coming from? I mean to say it is a branch of which one? Remember, internal thoracic artery is a branch of your subclavian artery. Try to recall again from the head and neck topic, subclavian artery. And we all know subclavian artery is in turn divided to how many parts? Sir? Subclavian artery will be actually divided here into three parts with the help of that scalenous anterior muscle. We have discussed that in detail in the head and neck topic. And out of that three parts of the subclavian artery, first part, the first part of the subclavian artery will give three branches that is VIT wit branches. I hope now you are able to recall that mnemonic. So, subclavian artery is divided into three parts and out of that three parts, the first part of the subclavian artery will give wit branches, VIT, wit. V for vertebral and vertebral artery we have studied in the neuroanatomy, it will be going up and contributing for the formation of circle of valleys and all. And T actually stands for thyrocervical trunk, we have seen that. And the last one, I actually stands for internal thoracic artery. I hope now you are getting the entire connection there. Perfect guys. Now, what is the further thing that we need to learn here? So, in this topic of inter intercostal artery here, what we have learned right now is that it is not only one intercostal artery, actually we are having like two types of that. One is anterior intercostal artery, another one is the posterior intercostal artery. And now, let us learn about both of them one by one. So, first let us learn about the posterior intercostal artery. Let us learn about the posterior intercostal artery first. It is a very simple topic guys, you can even learn it now itself. It is not all like very vast topic, very big topic, it is just a simple topic, it is all about numbers now. Now in total, how many posterior intercostal arteries do we have? Like uh, will you have the posterior intercostal arteries in all the intercostal spaces? Yes, of course. Now try to think like this here, I do not know why most of the students will be just trying to mug up the numbers, do not try to just simply directly jump and you know mug up the numbers there guys, no. Try to apply the concept, simple concept. How many ribs do we have in total? In total, you will be actually having those 12 pairs of the ribs, 12 on one side and 12 on the other side. If there are like 12 ribs there, in between the ribs, how many spaces will you have? 11. 11 intercostal spaces you will be having. So, if there are 11 intercostal spaces, how many intercostal arteries will you have? There will be 11 only. Understanding? So, 11 pairs of the posterior intercostal arteries you will be having. Makes sense. So, out of that 11 pairs of the posterior intercostal arteries, remember, out of all that 11 pairs, all of the 11 pairs are not given by the iota. That is important. Out of all that 11 pairs, all of them are not given by the iota. Out of this, remember, there will be a superior thoracic, superior intercostal artery. And that superior intercostal artery is the one which will give rise to upper two branches. Superior intercostal artery will give rise to upper two posterior intercostal arteries. That is the only one point that you have to remember here. Then what about the remaining 9 sir? All the remaining 9 are given by iota. So, iota will actually give rise to the lower 9 posterior intercostal artery and that completes this topic here. I hope you are not now getting it. It is so simple. It is not all a difficult topic. You can just learn now along with me. So, in total how many posterior intercostal arteries do you have? 11 pairs and out of that 11 pairs upper 2 are given by superior intercostal artery whereas the lower 9 will be given by iota. That is all, 9 plus 2, totally 11. Now, one thing I would like to tell you here, like uh, do not get confused, okay, suddenly where is this superior intercostal artery coming from? Superior intercostal artery is again a branch which is coming from your subclavian only. Subclavian, costocervical trunk, costocervical will give superior intercostal artery. Okay, And I do not even have to tell you about iota. So, this topic is completed here. Now, let us move towards the next one. Anterior intercostal artery, anterior intercostal artery and again do the same thing guys, 
first of all try to understand in total how many will be there how many anterior to costal arteries do you have in total now how many ribs will be coming anteriorly that's the reason why in the beginning of this topic i taught you in the beginning of thorax topic i taught you about the ribs okay every topic is important sir i'm not just teaching you simply just like that i don't want to waste your time every topic is important we know that 11th and 12th ribs are floating ribs they don't even come anteriorly their ends will be free the floating ribs so in total how many ribs are coming anteriorly anteriorly there will be like totally 10 ribs coming i am not at all concerned whether they are getting attached to sternum or they are getting attached to cartilage i am not concerned with their attachment right now i am just concerned with the number how many are coming anteriorly 10 ribs if the 10 ribs are coming anteriorly it means that how many spaces will be there in the middle nine spaces so therefore in total you'll be actually having nine pairs of anterior intercostal artery there is no big signs in that one so we can easily say that 10th and 11th intercostal space will not have anterior intercostal artery i repeat again 10th and 11th intercostal space will not have anterior intercostal artery there will be only nine pairs now out of this nine pairs let us try to find out like they are the branches of which artery to understand that let's first of all go back to this diagram this is my sternum here try to understand first on our body here so just look at me here first of all i'll explain on my body and then we'll actually draw the diagram this is the sternum here and just adjacent to the sternum internal thoracic artery here internal thoracic artery over here and that internal thoracic artery will give one two three four five and six only upper six i repeat again only upper six anterior intercostal arteries the anterior intercostal arteries are given by internal thoracic artery then sir what about the seventh eighth and ninth look here the internal thoracic artery will be ending here and it will be ending or terminating there by dividing into two branches here guys so internal thoracic artery will terminate there by dividing into two branches and these two branches will be number one superior epigastric artery and another one will be musculophrenic artery whenever you are studying along with me and whenever i am saying you any new name new terminology new artery or something better wherever you are in any corner of the world you are sitting and learning try to repeat that name with me come on internal thoracic artery will be ending and dividing into two branches superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery out of these two musculophrenic artery is the one which will give rise to 7th 8th and 9th anterior intercostal artery it is given by musculophrenic artery then sir what about the superior epigastric artery what is the fate of that one superior epigastric artery will continue down into rectus sheath it is a content of rectus sheath and that will again continue in the abdomen topic that will again going to come in the abdomen topic guys that is the entire story so let us first of all draw in this diagram here internal thoracic artery is going to end here or terminate here by dividing into two branches and these two branches are there will be one branch here that is superior epigastric artery superior epigastric artery and another branch here will be the musculophrenic artery it is ending by dividing into two branches superior epigastric artery and musculophrenic artery out of these to remember musculophrenic artery is the one which will actually give rise to 7th and then 8th and 9th anterior intercostal artery 7th 8th and 9th anterior intercostal artery is given by musculophrenic artery and then whereas the superior epigastric artery this is the one which will continue down as a content of rectus sheath it's going to continue down as a content of rectus sheath crystal clear concept so let us just repeat again for the last and final time and then i'll make you write down in the notes also here guys in total how many anterior intercostal arteries do we have nine pairs and out of that nine pairs upper six are given by internal thoracic artery seventh eighth and ninth will be given by musculophrenic artery hope i'm making it easier for you so in the anterior intercostal arteries let us just write down the notes and finish it off internal thoracic artery it is the one which will give rise to upper six anterior intercostal arteries whereas the musculophrenic artery 
musculophrenic artery is the one which will give rise to the 7th, 8th and 9th anterior intercostal artery. So instead of simply mugging up like this, I have already showed you in the diagram so that you will be able to retain that very well in your mind. Fine. So that completes everything regarding the intercostal artery, the anterior intercostal artery as well as the posterior intercostal artery. And everything is actually made simple here with the help of this diagram here guys. Now one more question I am able to recall which was asked in the exam. Where exactly is this internal thoracic artery terminating? Where is this internal thoracic artery terminating? It is ending by dividing into two branches in which intercostal space? So remember this will actually divide or terminate in 6th intercostal space. The internal thoracic artery is going to end or terminate in the 6th intercostal space guys, 6th intercostal space. Okay. So I think in one diagram we are able to complete the entire thing regarding the intercostal artery. So let us do one thing very quickly, let us just summarize all the numbers. Okay. So intercostal artery first of all there will be of two types, one is the anterior intercostal artery and the posterior. The posterior intercostal artery in total will be 11 pairs and out of that 11 pairs upper 2 are actually given by superior intercostal artery, lower 9 are given by aorta. Whereas anteriorly anterior intercostal arteries totally will be 9 pairs and out of that 9 upper 6 are given by internal thoracic artery, 7th, 8th and 9th is given by musculophrenic artery. That is the entire summary and the focus should be mainly on the numbers guys. So that is about all your intercostal arteries here. Done.